All right, so we're going to make an attempt to unravel the tales of Hunter Biden's controversies, as well as watching the unraveling of the Biden administration as a result. To what make, I mean, like, honestly, folks, did they think we were stupid? We weren't going to figure this out? I mean, we're going to make complete sense of this in a minute. But, you know, after a year late confirmation by the New York Times that the Washington Post that had the laptop was actually, in fact, real, we're going to, we're going to, break down everything there is here to discuss this political analyst, founder of Long Island Loud Majority and TikTok star Sean Farage. Sean, welcome to Wake America Weekend. Um, this is something you've been talking about it for a while. It's like, hey, we got this laptop. Well, we can't verify it. It's Russian misinformation. Uh, well, here's his signature. Uh, well, here's his address. Well, here's his phone number. So is it Hunter Biden's laptop? They say, no, it's not. What do you make of it? <laughs> well, um, it really, when you, when you looked at what happened last October, and what really got me really upset about the laptop scenario is that you heard Bill Barr criticize mm-hmm. so many people for not you know, taking action or not verifying it. Right. He was the attorney general, and he was the one who decided not to take action on the laptop when it was brought up the first time. Miranda Devine, New York Post, you saw all this happening, right. and it just got swept under the rug. Russian disinformation. I'm tired of that excuse. Everything that the left doesn't agree with all of a sudden winds up being Russian disinformation. You know, you hear about this all the time. That was election interference. There was a poll that went out. Dan Bongino talks about this all the time, that if they knew about the Hunter Biden laptop, a significant number of people would have voted differently. But the story was suppressed. You saw it happen through big tech, through the mainstream media, yeah. through, through uh, institutions in our own government, and it interfered in the 2020 election. And it, I think it changed the outcome. And that's one of the many ways the outcome could have been tinkered with. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to, to me to think that the media would suppress this. And we're going to talk to another person later who actually grilled the uh, editor for The Atlantic and who said, you know, this story really doesn't interest me. Why, why should I bother covering it? Well, what do you think about that? Well, do you think if the story was about Donald Trump Jr. that the 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 gentleman or whoever it is in the Atlantic woman, is yeah. going to say the same thing? Woman, I'm sorry. I don't know if we're allowed to assume genders, but if we are, we're biologists. Woman, it's fine. But I'm not a biologist, so it's not really <laughs> in my place to do that. But uh, but you know, when you look at things like that, how the media just decided, nah, this isn't relevant. This is let's just sweep this away. Well, that's because it, that's because it implicated the wrong person. You yeah. see, if it implicated Don Jr. or Eric Trump or God forbid, you know, you heard Barron got detention in school. You would have heard all about it on the news. Yeah. But, you know, because it implicated Hunter Biden and you saw all these terrible things on the laptop, and they decided they didn't, they didn't want to touch it. Yeah, but the, the cultural issue of this is like you have, a, and we were just talking about it on our panel a minute ago, you know, you have somebody, Joe Biden, who's been in office for the better part of a half century. And he, I mean, look, he's, he's so old, he served in the Senate with people who were born before the light bulb was made, okay? This guy's been around forever. He's made $174,000 or less a year for, for the last 50 years, yet he's a multimillionaire. How does that happen? Well, there are special interests and kickbacks and things that happen when you get into office. That's the swamp. Mm-hmm. And even at a local level, when we're here on Long Island, we see our, our local GOP, the Suffolk County Republican Party, yeah working against the will of the people Mm -hmm. and it's disgusting and it all revolves around the almighty dollar and what that dollar buys you yeah and it's uh you know it's disgusting but that's how the swamp covers for itself so you um you have a unique talent uh that's been seen here before but if you were trump and you sound like him a lot of times what would you say about the hunter biden laptop well i would call it the laptop from hell you know you look at it the laptop from hell there's so many terrible things that are on there you're talking about drugs you're talking about potentially things that he was doing with children that go beyond just a sniff you know when you look at it it's a terrible thing so the laptop from hell is a real problem it's becoming a bigger problem and it's time we get to the bottom of it believe me (laughs) sean parash always good to have you on sir appreciate you joining us thank you all right All right, folks, French voters headed to the polls today. President Macron looking for another term in office. We're going to be live from Paris next.